What's going on, people? How you doing? This is TK coming at you. Just want to hit you guys with a concept of empowerment. Now, a lot of times when you think about empowerment, you don't think about giving. But when you work in accordance with nature, to the measure that you give, you receive. So if you participate in a microfunding uh, or a microfund crowd situation, then essentially you have a two-way street of giving that's solely based on propagation. And that's something that I truly believe in and something that's demonstrated when you see distributed payment systems like Bitcoin. Now, I've uh, talked about a system called Let's Multiply that operates on these principles. And realistically, if you think about the decentralized nature of Bitcoin and how every node or individual wallet within Bitcoin acts like its own bank, then what you're looking at is a independent uh, distributed system where every participant has equal power as every other participant, which is a complete opposite of what we find within centralized banking, where all of the power, the money, and the uh, interest gained is held by the bank. So I've been trying to encourage people to become their own bank. Listen to me, when I say Bitcoin is the future, it's going to revolutionize the finance industry. As a matter of fact, it already has. It's just that people haven't woken up to it yet. But you know what? Companies have not only woken up, they've started to get ahead of the trending curve because companies tend to be more forward thinking than individuals. Companies like uh, Subway, Starbucks, um, Telsa, uh, Lamborghini, they all accept overstock, they all accept cryptocurrency as a form of payment. Now, think about that. The dollar is uh, $200 trillion worldwide, over a trillion dollars uh, in the U.S., in the red. All major banks, you name the big banks, they, at least for the past five years, have been insolvent, where they cook the books and essentially balance their sheet with helicopter money, with quantum easing. So if you actually showed uh, honest reporting or, or, or reflective mathematics, you would see that all of these banks have no operating capital. They're in the red because they have derivative shorts where they gamble with your money <laughs> and loss. So how does major banks keep their doors open when most of their balance sheet is in the red? How do you sustain a currency like the dollar when it's being held up by the petrodollar oil agreement with Saudi Arabia and the world reserve currency status in terms of exchanging dollars before you convert to any other currency. So we get a commission on oil, we get a commission on currency exchange. And that's what truly allows America to have a blank check. That's not sustainable. That's a house of cards that in a windstorm may not survive. So instead of waiting for the dollar to reach inflationary levels of Cyprus or Venezuela or Zimbabwe, why not get involved in a stronger currency that empowers you with a stronger purchasing power and sound mathematics that escapes inflationary tactics like cooking books. You cannot edit the ledger. 
in Bitcoin because the ledger is public and it requires a consensus amongst every single wallet holder in order to add a new entry. So whether you are subtracting or adding, the entire network has to visualize that and then compute that in order to add it to the ledger. Whereas private centralized banking can be edited with a few keystrokes. So it's a complete opposite system. It's a system of empowerment that involves peer-to-peer -peer microfinance and gives you the ability to control, manage, and own your own money. Everyone should embrace cryptocurrency because it's sound money, because it empowers you, because it allows you to become your own bank. Think about a world tomorrow where people run to fiat, or I'm sorry, run out of fiat, out of desperatism. You know, you realize that the purchasing power of your uh, Venezuelan Boulevard is, you know, the same level as um, a place like Zimbabwe. So, because the paper is not worth its weight, you look for an alternative. You seek out a safe haven for your money, for your wealth, and that can be Bitcoin, gold, and silver. Now, in a transitioning world where people can't really fathom the concept of gold money, Bitcoin takes the place of electronic gold because of the fact that Bitcoin holds its intrinsic value. Well, some people will say Bitcoin doesn't have an intrinsic value, but it operates on the same principles as gold because there's a limited supply, 21 million coins against a broad market demand of 7 billion people. Of course, the more money that influence or influx into the system of Bitcoin means that the price discovery will go up. So the rarity of the 21 million coins against the demand of 7 billion people will require the price to continuously rise, which is why I always say that the 2010 cycle of Bitcoin will repeat itself over and over because those people who had the vision to see Bitcoin in 2010 are millionaires today. And it didn't take a lot of money. $100 or $1,000 would have got you to the promised land. But that cycle is sort of uh, repetitive because of the fact that price discovery requires the coin to continuously adapt to the amount of money that comes into the market. You have to just buy and hold. That in itself will get you the same place that a hundred or a thousand dollars would have got you in 2010. Transition over to the sound money of tomorrow that allows smart mathematics. You know, in Bitcoin we say, in mathematics we trust because the ledger is immutable. You cannot edit an entry, whether it's an addition or subtraction the consensus mechanism within Bitcoin requires that everyone agrees if that entry is going to be added. So realistically, you can change your financial future. You can open doors that's currently closed to you because Bitcoin is the internet of money, which means you could send currency to anyone in the world at a fraction of Western Union fees. Think about that. Think about the limitations that don't exist in Bitcoin against the control measures that exist within fiat currency. We're looking at a world in which fiat currency will continuously die because the banksters that run it are greedy and they continuously gamble in derivative debt and lose and then pass laws like the Dodd-Frank Act where they confiscate your bank account to make up for their losses. So don't wait for your face to hit the curve in terms of your buying power. Switch over every 
payday with $100 into Bitcoin and treat it like a savings account so that over time you begin to rival regular bank accounts because people can't seem to understand that when Bitcoin goes up, you see it in your wallet, not the bank, not some third party counter risks. This is a trustless transaction with no third party involved. So if you have one Bitcoin and Bitcoin goes up $100, which it did today, or I'm sorry, yesterday it went up $100, um, you see that $100 in your wallet. I'm only trying to empower you guys because a lot of people are not exposed to this information. Somebody posed the question. They said, how can you empower inner city poor when they are not exposed to the same information that affluent people are exposed to? So the idea of this video is to expose you to the concept of smart money, the concept of being your own bank, the concept of personal empowerment through decentralization. And guess what? Just converting $100 every payday to Bitcoin is going to empower you greater than saving $100 in a, in a, a primary uh, bank account that's earning less than 1%. So my encouragement to you guys is to get active in the Bitcoin market because of the fact that it's the first cryptocurrency ever created. It solved the problem of double spin. So now you have intellectual property that's rare and can't be duplicated. So its first application on the internet is money, is currency. But there will be many other applications within blockchain technology. When we start getting into title, car, anything that is of value can be soundly accounted for within a public distributed ledger. And that's what we're talking about when we say Bitcoin and when we say blockchain. We're talking about a consistent mechanism that allows value to be transferred in a immutable ledger that requires every participant within the network to agree on that transfer of value. Power yourself, open some financial doors, gain some financial literacy.